हाई वोल्टेज डायरेक्ट करंट ट्रांसमिशन इज इट गोइंग टू बी द फ्यूचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ट्रांसमिशन सर्टनली इन सम सीनारियोज द एच वी डी सी ट्रांसमिशन ऑफर्स एडवांटेज इज ओवर द हाई वोल्टेज ए सी ट्रांसमिशन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द डिफरेंट की कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द हाई वोल्टेज डायरेक्ट करंट ट्रांसमिशन विच वी नीड टू हैव इन ऑर्डर टू इम्प्लीमेंट द एच वी डी सी ट्रांसमिशन स्कीम इन द एंड वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू लुक एट द थ्री डी मॉडल ऑफ द एच वी डी सी स्टेशन विच विल गिव यू मच मोर क्लैरिटी अबाउट इट सो मेक श्योर यू वॉच इट टिल दी एंड और आई सो नाउ वेन वी से द हाई वोल्टेज डायरेक्ट करंट ट्रांसमिशन वॉट कम्स इट टू अवर माइंड इज फर्स्ट वी विल हैव द ए सी कमिंग इन आफ्टर दैट दैट ए सी वी आर वी विल बी कनेक्टिंग टू द कन्वर्टिंग स्टेशन दैट वी हैव सो कन्वर्टिंग स्टेशन दिस विल कन्वर्ट योर ए सी इन टू डी सी राइट आफ्टर दैट देर विल बी द डायरेक्ट करंट ट्रांसमिशन लाइन सो लेट से दिस इज दी डी सी लाइन and again there will be a station which will be converting the incoming dc into alternating current again and then again we will have uh, the ac here and the ac transmission will continue so that's the general diagram that comes to our, our mind when we say the high voltage direct current transmission but certainly there are a lot of other things are also involved uh, to do the high voltage direct current transmission let us talk about that let us understand what are all the things that we need for hvdc transmission so first is of course we will be having the incoming ac so we will say this is the incoming supply now this incoming supply of course we will be connecting it to the converting station but certainly what happens if there is some wrong, something wrong with the ac supply there could be a fault there could be anything and the current may rise to a very high value now in that scenario we must have some switch gear installed which will protect us from that fault condition and as a result this ac uh, first we will need the ac switch yard which will have all the switch gear basically the substations uh, equipment that we have we will have current transformer voltage transformer lightning arrestor circuit breakers disconnectors and all the things that are there in the substation will be needed in this particular ac switch yard also additionally this ac switch yard will also have uh, some ac filters now of course uh, there is a possibility the ac supply that we are uh, getting is not 100% clean it may have some harmonics into that now in order to filter out that harmonic or reduce the effect of harmonics and also to balance the reactive power uh, the filter is connected in that now the output of filter is much more quality output of the alternating current and now this output can be given to the uh, converting stations that we have but certainly this will be of let's say very high value let's say 420 kilo volts now this 420 kilo volt cannot be directly given to the converting stations that we have we must step it down and we must also adjust the phase angle of uh, the voltage depending on what uh, the technology converting technology that we are using so certainly in between we will need a converting transformer so this is my converting transformer now what it will do it will convert the voltage into a level which is accepted by the converters and also it will adjust the phase angle of the uh, different phases that we have now the output of this uh, for sure can be given to the converting station so this is my converting station now this is where uh, the ac will be converted into the dc supply now there are different technologies available to do that uh, we, for example we have thyristor technology which uses thyristor to convert the ac into dc now while in the operation this converting station can heat up to a very high level so as a result uh, we may need to provide it with some sort of cooling arrangement now it may vary based on the different technology that we have uh, but generally a cooling arrangement is required for the converting station so that uh, that also we need here now the output of this converting station will not be a very clean dc output so there will be lot of uh, ripples inside the dc so you see this declining lines basically are the ripples and it's not very quality output now in order to improve this what we need to do is we need to add some 
reactor in the system which will smooth out the output of the DC and as a result we also need a smoothing reactor here this is called as smoothing reactor it will help us to get a little bit better output than the previous one so for sure that is more advantageous and also this reactor will help us in limiting the DC fault current and also if there are some harmonics in the DC line that will also be reduced. Now there are the designs available this can be um, oil immersed reactor or it could be air core design as well both the options are available. Now for sure uh, the output of reactor is much more smoother than that of uh, the previous one let me clear it up. Now there is certainly a possibility where we need to take let's say maintenance on the uh, th uh, converting station or maybe we have to cut down the supply or maybe there is a fault in the DC system. To protect us, to protect our equipment from that definitely we will have to have a DC switch yard as well. Now in this DC switch yard there will be DC switch gear so there will be instrument transformer, lightning arrester. Uh, switches to uh, open and close the circuit everything will be provided in the DC switch yard now just like the AC switch yard here also we will have different option we have option of uh, going with the AIS switch gear or also the DC HVDC GIS switch gear both the options are available here now from the DC switch yard we will be running a DC transmission line the HVDC transmission line so this is let's say the HVDC line that we have so this is one part of that now we have converted AC into DC and now we are supplying power using the DC transmission line similarly when we come to the receiving station it will also first have the DC switch yard right which will protect us from any sort of fault on the DC and again uh, there could be a reactor here to smooth out the DC again the output of this uh, converting uh, the output of reactor will be given to the converting station so let me draw it here like this and then there will be transformer again converting transformer which will transform the DC voltage into the suitable AC voltage and again there will be AC switch yard if required we can also install the filters here and then we will have the AC output and from here the AC transmission lines uh, can go and transmit the supply to the required places. So that are all the things that are necessary for having a HVDC system. Certainly it's a complicated system and you need to have skilled manpower for this and this is no doubt the expensive technology compared to the HVAC system but there are some applications where the HVDC is the only choice. Now we have already talked about what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages of HVDC system. I have a dedicated playlist on HVDC, I'll provide a link for that down in the description. You can go and check it out. Now let us look at the 3D model of this HVDC system which will give you a better clarity of what we discussed so far. So now here is the 3D model that we have so you can see everything is there we have uh, the AC switch yard we have uh, the converting transformers connected here then there is a conversion hall where AC into DC happens then there is a DC switch yard and then also the cooling arrangement let us let us look at uh, everything one by one. So here you can see first what you can see is uh, we have the incoming lines these are the incoming lines you can see. It's coming let's say from uh, a different substation and that lines we have connected to the AC switch yard that we have here and this switch yard will have everything. So right from the lightning arrester, the potential transformer, disconnector, circuit breaker, current transformers and everything will be there. If necessary we can also install the AC filters to filter out the harmonic content in the AC supply voltage. Once we have uh, everything connected in place then that input is given to the converting converter transformers that we have. The switch yard also protects the converter transformer because this is one of the expensive equipment and very very bulky uh, equipment this makes a lot of noise uh, when in operation. So you can also see the image of that 
and it's like almost like an elephant uh, it's it's huge it's bulk and it makes a huge noise while it is in operation so those are the converter transformers that we need to have in order to convert the incoming supply into a, a supply into an input uh, which can be accepted by the converting stations that we have now let us go to the converting station so this is inside the converting stations you can see we have lightning arresters installed here and the then we have given the supply to this converter so this is thyristor technology and this is where uh, the ac will be converted into a dc supply and there are technologies the uh, few technologies can also do it vice versa this same thing can also convert dc into ac that is also possible so you can see this is the converter station inside the converter station and during operation this gets heated up a lot of heat is produced so to cool that we also have uh, the cooling station so you can see this is the cooling station which helps in cooling down the converting station so there is a dedicated cooling stations provided for that as well so this is the converter hall it must be installed inside a building cannot be uh, you know installed in the outdoor application and then lastly we have the dc switch yards so you can see we have reactors here this uh, circular shape represents the reactor which helps is uh, in smoothing down uh, the output of the dc and reduce the ripple that are there in the dc supply and also they limit the dc fault current and if there are some dc harmonics that is also limited by this dc converter and you can also see there is a switches uh, we have we are using here so these are the switches so this is basically a dc switch yard as i mentioned we can have air insulated or gas insulated switch gear here for dc in this 3d model the ais switch gears are used here so those are all the important components that we need to have for the hv dc supply Now let us quickly summarize what we discussed so far let us quickly summarize and have a look at the different components of the hvdc system so first we have the incomer ac here let me change the color of this uh, so that it would be let's take this one so first we have the incomer ac supply from which is given to the ac switch yard which protects us in case of a fault and also there can be filters to uh, remove the harmonics from the ac supply and then there will be the converting state transformer that is very very important which will help us in making the supply suitable for the converter stations that we have so here we have the converter station here the ac will be converted into the dc or vice versa is also possible if required we may also need to provide a cooling arrangement for that once the output is converted to dc it is given to the smoothing reactor which will reduce the ripples from the dc supply and then there will be a dc uh, switch yard uh, to protect us from the dc fault condition and also to turn off the supply when necessary and again we will have hvdc line here then there again dc switch yard reactor converter station converter transformer ac switch yard and then again uh, it will be connected to the ac and then there will be ac transmission line so that is the complete cycle of the hvdc transmission system now the tech based on the technology that we are using for the hvdc transmission uh, the components might vary but on a broader level on a general level uh, this is a good information that you can have so i hope uh, you got to learn new things today if you found the video helpful then do comment helpful in the comment section below in that way i'll understand uh, this type of content is helping you thank you so much for watching guys if you found the video helpful then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing about hvdc components thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning